now while you're watching this video please remember to like share this video subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for notifications of future videos thank you yes hello there welcome back to my channel guys yes today i have a short video here for you today is wednesday and as i would have stated before last week on wednesday we'll be looking at particular scripture passages that christians often use and take out of context today we are looking at the book of isaiah isaiah 65 verse 4 and isaiah 66 66 verse 17 i have chosen to look at both of them together reason being is because isaiah 65 verse 4 it's far too easy to, an to, to answer and so it's not worth a video by itself the, pr the other verse however which is isaiah 66 verse 17 it's a much more challenging challenging verse to actually deal with However, both of these verses are verses that are oftentimes used by all covenant believers in order to enforce the ancient dietary laws of the Old Testament that was enjoined to the children of Israel but not given to the Gentiles because those laws were basically blotted out at the cross. Yes, I said it, they were blotted out at the cross. And you may be asking me, who am I talking when I say Old Covenant Believers, Seventh-day Adventists, Hebrew Israelite Movements, Seventh-day Baptists, Seventh-day Church of God, and the likes. You know, several other, uh, others of them. No, they don't like to be called Old Covenant Believers, you know, because they have it to say that they, are, uh, that they are New Covenant Believers. But in their own ignorance, they don't realize that their very teachings are Old Covenant teachings, teachings that commands that are basically in the old covenant and not enjoined in the new covenant i have several videos where i talk about diet and so forth you can see it in the playlist section on dietary laws and the old covenant right check it out in the playlist section so i'm not going to show you um in this video that do uh, we are not under those laws anymore i'm just going to look at the text in question and show you guys who the text is actually speaking to it's beginning with the simpler one isaiah 65 in order to understand verse 4 one must start reading from verse 1 right now isaiah 65 verse 1 it reads thus i will be reading from the king james version i am sought of them that ask not for me i am found of them that sought me not i said behold me behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name this is the gentiles speaking of here and this text was actually quoted in the new testament as well so these verses i'm reading it's talking about gentiles jews and gentiles so the gentiles are the persons who sought god right who found god even though they didn't even though they were not seeking him right Verse 2 says, I spread up my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walk it in the way that was not good after their own thoughts. These are the Jews, the Israelites, right? Children of Israel. A people that provoke me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice in garden and burn it incense upon altars of bricks, right? Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessel which say stand by thyself come not near to me for i am holier than thou these are a smoke in my nose a fire that burneth all day so while they're breaking god commands you know right such as not to eat certain things right eat certain food and certain abominable things not to have any associations with it right so while while they while they do these things, you know, while they do these things, they are acting as if they are better than other persons, holier than thou, and so forth, right? But God says they are a smoke in His nose, right? So in other words, God doesn't consider them to be holy because they are rebellious, and while they are doing these things, and God is stretching out His hands to them and saying to them saying to them basically 
behold me, behold me. And they are not paying him any mind while they are doing the things that they are doing. However, what happened instead is that persons who were never seeking him, right, actually found him. This is what the text is saying. This is speaking to the children of Israel, right, who were under the dietary laws. We are no longer under those laws anymore. Therefore, this text is not applicable, right, to New Testament Christians. Now, for the other verse, Isaiah 66, verse 17. Isaiah 66, verse 17. Verse 16 says, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. The, just like the previous, the previous chapter, these verses are speaking to the children of Israel when they were under the old covenant law. God says that the slain of his will be many. These persons, you know, in Isaiah 66 verse 17, they sanctify themselves. Now, this is not true sanctification, right? Because while they sanctify themselves, or so they say, and they purify themselves in the gardens, behind a tree in the midst, while they were doing these things, they were eating. While they claim that they are sanctified, they, they are sanctifying themselves. They were eating swine flesh, and the abominations, right? And the most things that are abominable for them not to either consume or to have any partake with. They were doing these things, eating these things, right? Along with mouse, or mice, or rat. These will be consumed together. And why? The reason is, verse 18, God says he knows their works and their thoughts. And it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Now, J. Gill's commentary has quite a number of things to say where this is concerned. He made it specifically clear in his commentary that the eating of swine fish and mouse were forbidden by the law of Moses. Right? They are forbidden by the law of Moses. And we are no longer under the law of Moses. Acts chapter 15 basically tell you that I have a study on Acts chapter 15, which I will post in the comment section. We are no longer under the law of Moses. Right? However, here's what J. Gill says. Now, though the ceremonial law is abolished and all the distinctions of meat cease and will continue so in the times referred to, yet the descriptions of these unclean people pretending to so much sanctity and purity is taken from such persons who were reckoned impure in the times of the uh, uh, in the times the prophet wrote and may particularly he's saying that this may particularly point at such who abstain from meats at certain times to be eaten lawfully and yet are as unclean as those under the law were right who ate things forbidden they being such who are abominable and make an abomination and a lie. And here he quotes Revelation 21 verse 8. These shall be consumed together, saith the Lord, which is spoken of in verse 17 of Isaiah 66. No, verse 18 should say, in the above mentioned battles, so Jacob is saying that this will happen when they will be consumed, either in the above mentioned battles, where God said the slain of the Lord, the Lord shall be many. Right? You read that from verse 15 where, where it spoke about the battles and so forth. God coming with chariots and whirlwinds. Right? And so forth. And then in verse 16 it says that the slain of the Lord shall be many. So Jake is saying that when it says that they shall be consumed together. Right? In verse 18 of Isaiah 66, he's saying that it could be in the above mentioned battles, right? Or in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. So 
J. Gills is intertwining Isaiah 66 verse 17 with Revelation 21 verse 8. He's saying that when Revelation, Revelation 20, 21 verse 8 is talking about the abominable, it could be in reference to Isaiah 66 verse 17, the abominable, right? Now, remember now, you know, that those persons who were under the law, right? They will be judged by that because that was the system that they were under, right? So, because that was the system that they were under, it is that that they will be judged by the law. Those who are under the law will be judged by the law, right? Scripture tell you that clearly. And so, as a result of that, those persons who were eating certain things that they ought not to eat and so forth, on the day of judgment, they'll be considered as persons who are abominable because they ate abominable things that, were, that they were not supposed to. However, New Testament Christians who are not, who were never under the law, will not be judged by the law. No, they'll rather be judged by the gospel or more specifically by Christ himself. Right? So this is how you actually understand Isaiah 66. This is how Isaiah 66 verse 17 and Isaiah 65 verse 4 should be understood. Who was it uh, written to? Who was the message in reference to? It was the children of Israel who were under those laws. Right? I have videos on Romans chapter 14 as well. And you can check out those videos and a previous video that I, a recent video I did about Noah and dietary laws and so forth. Check out those videos as well. Dietary laws is not for New Testament Christians. It was only for Old Testament uh, uh, um, children of Israel under the Old Testament. So I end this video. I do hope you enjoy it. If you did, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe and share this video. Bye bye now.